Hello and welcome back to Linode. Linode makes available block storage and object storage, so there's definitely no shortage of storage on Linode's platform. But anytime we're dealing with storage, we really do need to keep an eye on what we're using because no matter how much storage you might have, it's always possible that you could run out. So what we're going to do in today's video is go over the df or disk free command, as well as the du, the disk usage command as well, and those commands together will help you understand what's actually being used on your storage. You'll see how much space you have available, and then you'll also be able to determine what in particular is using the most space. So let's go ahead and dive right into this particular tutorial, and I'll show you all about it. Like I mentioned during the intro, the theme of today's video is viewing disk usage. And the command that we'll take a look at first is the df command, which you could probably guess stands for disk free. And yeah, that's exactly right. That's what it stands for. And now that you know what it stands for, you could probably guess what it does. And as you can see from the output, the df command gives you information pertaining to how much disk space you have free. But there's quite a bit of information here, so it's a little bit hard to understand what's going on here. Not only that, what's up with these numbers? What do these numbers actually mean? Well, before I actually break down the output of the df command, there's a special option that is going to be especially useful for us because it's going to make this a bit easier to understand. So I'll type df and I'll provide the option dash h, just like you see here. And that's going to give us what's known as human readable numbers. Basically what the dash h option actually does is it breaks down the numbers into powers of 1024, which is most often going to be easier to read for most people. What I'll do on my end is include the dash h option for every example going forward. Anyway, let's get back to the output. We're actually going to ignore everything from here and then down. I'll let you know how to clean up the output later in this video. But for right now, let's just focus on the top half of the output here. And more specifically, what we'll notice is that the output is broken down into columns. We have file system, size, used, available, as well as the directory that the file system is mounted on. The first column is going to show us the file system path. We can ignore the ones that say tempfs. We're not really concerned with those. But what we will do is pay attention to the third line of output. In my case, it shows slash dev slash NVMe 0 and 1 P2. And on the right hand side, we see mounted on. It's a single forward slash. And if you've already seen the file system video in this series, then you know that the single forward slash represents the root file system or the beginning of the Linux installation. In fact, on my end, that's literally the only line that actually matters. We have a lot of system mounts here basically paths that the local Linux distribution uses for various features. But the single forward slash, what that is right there, is the root file system like I mentioned. And in my case, it's only 7% full because in the use percent column, we see 7%. We also see that specifically, we have about 414 gigabytes that are available for use. The entire size of the disk is 468 gigabytes and of that 468 gigabytes, 31 gigabytes are currently used. So from this one command, we know everything about how much space is used, how much space is free, the percentage of use, where that particular file system is mounted, the device that's actually mounted. In this case, it's an NVMe hard drive. And if I had any other mounts here, I don't know, like NFS mounts, maybe I'm mounting a share on a Samba file server. I could plug in an external hard drive. Whatever storage devices that I have attached to my server, they're all going to show up within the output of the df command. And of course I use dash h to give us human readable numbers. Now let's go ahead and add another option to the df command. I've already gone over what the dash h option does. Let's add another one. In this case, I'm going to add dash capital T. And after I press enter, you'll see that we have a new column here. The column is called type and it's actually giving us the file system type of the mount. So from this output, what you can see is that my root file system is an extended for partition. We see ext4 under type, and of course we see other types here. We have tempfs quite a few times. The boot partition is set to vfat. That's the type of file system that that one is. 
So that's a useful thing to have. But just like with the majority of Linux commands, we don't have to include each option separately. We can actually combine them together such that there's only one dash, like you see here. And the output is the same because essentially the command that I just ran is also the same. But I don't know about you, I am getting really tired of seeing all of these tempfs mounts here because personally, I'm not really looking into that right now, so I'd rather not see those. If I recall the previous command, what I could do is add the dash x option, and that allows us to hide something from the output. We want to exclude something. And what I want to do is exclude every line that constitutes tempfs. And again, that's just not something that I'm troubleshooting right now. So I want to clean up the output, and I'd rather not see that. So I'll press enter. And look at the output now. It's a lot easier to read. If you don't count the header line, we have just two lines of output here. That's a lot better. So with the dash X option, what that allowed me to do, like you just saw, was hide something from the output. Similarly, I could hide ext4. I don't know why I would want to do that, but you know what? You can do it. And well, that's going to hide the root file system from us, not something we would generally want to do. But as you can see, with a dash X option, you can hide whatever you'd like. And of course, we can combine that option with the others to save a little bit of space here. And I'll change this right here back to tempfs. And not only did I consolidate the options with the df command, I'm seeing just like before, two lines of output after the header row. So I think that's actually a very useful option to remember. Now let's see an example of combining the df command with another command. So I'll bring that command back up. And what I want to do is add the watch command to it. And what the watch command allows us to do is repeat the command over and over again. And if anything changes, we should be able to see that right away. So I'll press enter. And notice how it's showing me the output of that command, but it didn't return me to the command line. And that's okay. That's totally fine, because the power of the watch command is such that we'll see anything that's different immediately. So what I'm going to do is just plug in a flash drive. And as soon as I do that, you'll see an entry for the flash drive show up right here as it's automatically mounted. And as you've just seen, the output was immediately updated. I just basically had a flash drive on my desk that I apparently written the Pop! OS ISO image onto. I must have been using that for another video. Maybe my recent Pop! OS review that you could check out on this channel. But anyway, as soon as I inserted the USB key to my computer, I immediately see that the output right here has been updated, and I'm seeing both partitions on that flash drive shown right here. So that's another use case for the df command that goes beyond its normal use case of showing you how much disk space you're actually using or how much you have free. The last column, the mounted on column, is very useful to find out the path that something is mounted to. So in my case, I know that partition three of my flash drive is mounted at slash media slash j slash writable. Anyway, I'll break out of here. Let me just safely unmount that. SDA1 as well as SDA3 were both mounted. And now I can remove the flash drive. So anyway, as you can see in this section, the df command is very useful. It shows us how much disk space we actually have free, which file systems we have mounted, where they're mounted to. There's a lot of useful information right here, but the problem though is one thing that this does not show us is how much space is actually used on a folder or directory level. Because if we had a situation where, I don't know, maybe the root file system was near full, we would probably want to know what in particular constitutes the most used space or which folder is using up the most space. And that's just not something that the df command is going to enable us to do. And that right there is the reason why I wanted to include the du command in this video. Because while df is definitely very awesome, it just doesn't give us the full picture. And the way that the du command works is that you can give it the path to a directory and it'll show you how much space is actually used inside that directory. So I could just give it slash home slash j my home directory, which is kind of pointless because I'm in my home directory right now and I don't have to give it the path. 
but you could give it the path to any directory you have access to. Now the problem with the du command, before we give it any options, is that it's going to flood the terminal window with text. And there's going to be so much of it that it's going to be quite hard to read. But don't worry, I'll show you guys how to clean that up. Let's press enter and we'll see what the default output actually looks like. Now from here, there's really not a whole lot we could do with this information. On the left hand side, it's telling us how much space is being used at a folder level, which is great but I would prefer to have human readable numbers, kind of like what we did with the df command. And so much information has shown up on the screen that it just scrolled however many times. There's a lot of information here. Now, if we include the dash h option, similar to the df command, things become a little bit easier to read. So as you can see right here in my home directory, I'm currently using 302 megabytes. That's really not all that much. But if I was using a lot, then I guess I'd appreciate the fact that I ran this command. But we still have a bunch of lines here, and I would really like to clean up the output a bit. Now, one way that we could actually do this is by limiting how deep within the directory tree the du command is allowed to go. So I'll type du and then dash h again. And I'm going to run it against my home directory, but I didn't have to type the path. I'm just typing the path so you can see the entire syntax of the command. But I could totally leave this off since I'm currently in my home directory right now. But what I want to do is give it another option. And this one is dash dash max dash depth. And I'm going to give it a maximum depth of one. And then the directory that I want it to look in. So let's see how the output differs with the max depth option. Now that's a lot easier to read, isn't it? Everything shows up in the terminal without any scrolling being necessary. So what the max depth option does is it controls how many directories deep the du command is allowed to go. So by limiting this to one, in this case, it's only able to go one directory deep. It is showing us the actual usage of each of these directories. That part is true, but it's only going to print output of one directory deep. But you can, of course, increase this number right here. So I'll just set it to two. And now it's able to go two directories deep. So that's very useful, as you can see. And if I do say so myself, this is a lot easier to read, especially compared to the original example that I gave you, which was just du and then a path. That was quite hard to read. But I would say that this example right here is very easy to read. And it might even be all you need in order to find out which directory is the largest or which directory might be contributing to the fact that your hard drive is full, if it is, this will definitely help you find the culprit. But I'm going to show you an even better way before the end of the video, so definitely stay tuned to the end. For right now, there's a few other options that I would like to show you for the du command, so let's continue. Next, what I'm going to do is run du-hs. We already know what the dash h option does. That's human readable output. But what's dash s? Well, actually, dash s, that option gives us a summary. And at first, it might not actually seem all that useful. I mean, it is giving me the disk usage total within my home directory, which is, I guess, useful. But it's not breaking down the subdirectories or anything like that. So this could be useful, but we're not quite done yet. Now, another thing that we could do with the du command is report on multiple directories at the same time. And not a lot of people know this, but you can absolutely do that. So what I'm going to do is also report on the usage of the Etsy directory. Now what I'm going to do on my end is include the sudo command at the very beginning of this command. And the reason for that is because my local non-root user will not have access to everything within the Etsy directory. So by including sudo, I'm actually just running this as root. And that way I could try to avoid as many errors as possible. And that's exactly what I would see without the sudo command here. I would see a bunch of errors. Anyway, I'll press enter. And check this out. We're seeing the total usage of two different directories. And this is great if you want to, well, compare directories and see how their sizes compare. You give the du command multiple paths, like I've done here, and that's exactly what you'll see. And let's move on to another option. And here we have the previous example, which was very useful, if I do say so myself, but what I'm going to do is add the dash C option to this particular command. And when I press enter, 
what you'll see is that the last line is a total of everything that came up in the output. So the 302 megabytes plus the 16 megabytes equals 317 megabytes. Actually, that's not completely true, but we're going to ignore that because we could have been just below 16 or maybe just below 301. And regardless, in this case, the combined size of both of those directories equals 317 megabytes. Sure, it should probably equal 318 megabytes. So either I had something on the disk that might be a larger size, perhaps it was estimating and it's not quite up to 16 or not quite up to 302, but either way, the dash C option gives us a total and that could be useful. But I will admit that example right there is not necessarily the best example of the dash C option because what I'm going to do right now is give you my favorite variation of the DU command. So because I'm lazy, I'll pull up the previous command. And I'll remove the Etsy directory. And that's just going to give us the output from one directory. We pretty much knew that would happen. But the biggest benefit of the dash C option, at least in my opinion, is that when you combine it with H and S, like you see here, we can actually get a summary of every subdirectory because what I'm doing is I'm including a trailing slash at the end of the path, and then I'm adding an asterisk, which means that I want this command to be run against every single subdirectory inside that directory. I think you're going to understand completely why I like this particular variation so much. So for every subdirectory, it's giving me the total usage of that directory. And I could use that against any directory that I have access to. If I had one directory that was using a lot more than another, then I could find out right here exactly which one to focus on. Now, before I close out this particular video, there's one more command that I would like to give you, but I'm not going to go over this command, but I want to make sure that you guys are aware that the ncdu command actually exists. Now, when I enter this command right here, it should become immediately apparent why I like it so much. Now, as you can see here, it's giving me a breakdown of the folders underneath my home directory or whatever directory you give the ncdu command. But what's cool about this is you can use the up and down arrows to select a directory. You could press enter to go inside that directory. So you can see right here, I have 254 megabytes or maybe bytes in my Terraform directory. And I can just keep drilling down. And this will definitely help you traverse the file system, especially when you're trying to find out how much space is being used and that's because the ncdu command actually sorts things by usage by default, and it's definitely something you should have installed. It's almost never installed by default on most distributions, but I do have a video about this. Like I mentioned, I'll leave a card for it right about here, and you can check out that video and learn about the ncdu command, and I highly recommend that you do that because ncdu is one of those commands that, while it's not installed by default, I like to make sure that every single Linux server that I maintain has ncdu installed, because, well, if your disk is completely full, you won't be able to install NCDU at all because you won't have any space to install it in. So it's one of those that you want to make sure that you install before it becomes a problem. But anyway, I showed you guys some examples of the DU and DF commands in this video, and I hope it was helpful. So hopefully this video has helped you out. I had a lot of fun making this video, and in this video, we covered the DF command as well as the DU command. I hope you enjoyed this content, and if you did, then please consider clicking that like button, and also subscribe if you haven't already done so, because we have some awesome content coming very soon. Anyway, thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.